Amitra's development code BTS27419 is a non-systemic acaricide and insecticide and has also been described as a scabicide. It was first synthesized by the Boots Co. in England in 1969. Amitra's has been found to have an insect repellent effect, works as an insecticide and also as a pesticide synergist. Its effectiveness is traced back on alpha-adrenergic agonist activity, interaction with octopamine receptors of the central nervous system and inhibition of monoamine oxidases and prostaglandin synthesis. Therefore, it leads to overexcitation and consequently paralysis and death in insects. Because amitraz is less harmful to mammals, amitraz is among many other purposes best known as insecticide against mite or tick infestation of dogs. It is also widely used in the beekeeping industry as a control for the Varroa destructor mite, although there are recent reports of resistance, driven by overuse and off-label use. Use Amitraz is particularly effective against acarins, but it is used as a pesticide in many different fields. Therefore, amitraz is available in many different forms, such as a wettable powder, an emulsifiable concentrate, a soluble concentrate, liquid, and an impregnated collar for dogs. It is characterized as an insect repellent, insecticide, and pesticide synergist. These are the properties which make it especially useful as a pesticide. The repellent effect causes insects to turn away from their target as this is treated with amitraz. It acts as an insecticide, which means that it can be used to control insects that are directly or indirectly harmful to man. As a pesticide synergist it also increases the effect of some other pesticides if they are combined with amitraz. These can be traced back to the mechanisms of action, which lead to a wide field of effects, including direct lethality, excitant repellent behavioral effects, and chemosterilization for the target species. In addition, it generally causes low damage to non-target species, which is one of the advantages of amitraz. Furthermore, amitraz is especially effective against insects such as spider mites and ticks in their juvenile and resistant forms. For agricultural purposes amitraz is primarily used to control the pear psylla, cacocilla pyricola, on Oregon pear crops and whiteflies and mites on cotton or pear crops. It's also applied to palm fruit, citrus fruit, cotton, stone fruit, bush fruit, strawberries, hops, cucurbits, aubergines, capsicums, tomatoes and ornamental plants to control all stages of tetranichid and eriophyte mites, pear suckers, scale insects, mealybugs, whiteflies, aphids and eggs and first instar larvae of Lepidoptera. To apply amitraz, various techniques can be used such as an air blast and concentrate spray to pears or by ground boom and aircraft to cotton. Territorial differences in amitraz use depend on the species of mites that infest the crops, trees, etc., the local practice, and the number and size of the pear trees. An infestation e.g. by Tetranicus spp requires higher rates of amitraz. Taking those factors into consideration the application volumes of amitraz have been standardized in terms of maximum spray concentration and in the rate of amitraz per hectare. Besides its application as pesticide on plants, amitraz is also used as an animal ectoparasiticide on cattle, goats, sheep, pigs and dogs. In these applications, it is exclusively applied externally. It achieves special efficiency against mites, first of all Demodex canis, but it also works against lice, flies, and all development stages of ticks. In combination with additional agents it can be used against flea infestation as well. For the treatment of dogs amitraz is available as a collar or as a spray or wash solution and has an immediate effect against tick infestation as well as a preventive effect. In some countries amitraz emulsions are also applied to treat demodicosis of cats or dogs, an exceeding infestation of mites of the family Demodicidae. For the treatment of cattle, sheep, goats and pigs amitraz is available as spray or wash solution, to treat or prevent infestations by mites, lice, flies and ticks. Thereby pigs and cattle should be sprayed and sheep and goats bathed. Other animal species Horses or chihuahuas, for example, should not be treated with amitraz because adverse effects may occur. Adverse effects 
Adverse effects in mammals are caused by amitra's alpha adrenergic agonist activity. Symptoms can include low blood pressure and pulse, hypothermia, lethargy, absence of appetite, vomiting, increased blood sugar and digestive problems. Furthermore, skin or mucosa irritations may occur in dogs as a response to an amitra's containing collar. This can lead to itching, eczema, alopecia or conjunctivitis. Toxicity Human toxicity In 2006 the United States Environmental Protection Agency US EPA, reassessed the classification for amitras to a non-quantifiable, suggestive evidence of carcinogenicity descriptor, and in 2013 determined that quantification of risk using a nonlinear approach for amitras will adequately account for all chronic toxicity, including carcinogenicity, that could result from exposure to amitras and its metabolites. Accidental exposure of men to greater amounts of amitras can lead to death due to respiratory failure, mainly after oral uptake or inhalation. In Turkey during 1989, 41 cases of deadly amitras intoxications have been detected. The observed toxic dose in about 50% of these patients has been 0.3 grams to 1.25 grams of 12.5% amitras formulations and 0.5 to 2 grams of 20% formulations. The remaining patients took doses up to 10 grams. Other frequently occurring symptoms after massive amitra's intoxication are CNS depression, respiratory depression, meiosis, hypothermia, hyperglycemia, loss of consciousness, vomiting and bradycardia. Treatment in case of an amitra's overdose in humans, adipamazole or yahimbine, which act as alpha-2 antagonists, can be used as antidote. Initially it is important to remove the patient from the amitra's contaminated area. When amitra's has been inhaled the patient should first get respiratory protection. Additionally the patient should be supplied with 4 L oxygen per minute. In case of an intoxication via skin contact, contaminated clothes should be removed first. Affected areas need to be washed with water. If eyes have been exposed to amitra's, anesthesia should be administered and the eyes carefully washed. After the oral intake of amitras it is important to make the patient drink ca. 0.3 L water to reduce amitras irritating effect on the gullet. Furthermore, it is important to prevent the patient as much as possible from vomiting, to reduce the risk of further aspiration of amitras. Subsequently, the patient need to be observed for at least 24 hours to ensure that the symptoms do not recur. Non-human toxicity Synthesis Since its discovery by Boots Co., in 1969 three main synthesis routes for amitras has been developed, which stand out in terms of facility and generality. Route 1 2, 4 xylidine plus triethyl orthoformate plus methylamine imine formation, amine formation One of the first amitras manufacturing plants used this reaction scheme, figure 1. Therefore, the reactions has been carried out in an enclosed area, to recycle unused reagents. The first step of this route is the reaction of an aniline with triethyl orthoformate. In the named manufacturing plant 2, 4 xylidine has been used as the aniline. The reaction yields an intermediate formimidate ester. In the next step methylamine is added, which combines with the formimidate ester to yield the desired formamidine. As the formamidines forms, ethanol is set free from the chemical reaction and is recycled. This is probably the most suitable method for the synthesis of amitras, because this second step yields in minus 2, 4 dimethyl N methylformamidine. The free NH groups of these molecules react with each other to finally yield amitras. The last steps of the manufacturing process include crystallization out from isopropyl alcohol, filtering, and drying. These last steps need to be carried out by instructed personnel, who wear full protective clothing with a positive pressure breathing apparatus. Route 2, substituted formamide plus aniline. The first step of this synthesis route to an n aryl formamidine as amitras is the reaction of a substituted formamide, usually a dialkylformamide, with an aniline. To gain amitras and methyl formamide in 2,4-dimethyl aniline hydrochloride can be used. Figure 2. 
This reaction is catalyzed by the presence of acid halides, such as POCl3, SOCl2, COCl2, or an aryl sulfonyl halide, as P toluene sulfonyl chloride figure 2. This yields an intermediate, which reacts further as it's catalyzed by P toluene acid to N, and methylamino dimethylidine D2, 4 xylidine amitris. Alternatively, the aniline in the first step can be replaced by an aryl formamide. In addition the replacement of the dialkylformamide with an N-alkylpyrrolidone can be used to obtain products of the clenpyrin group from this reaction. Root 3, aerylisocyanate plus formamide To achieve this reaction a mixture of suitable aerylisocyanate and formamide is heated and marked by the evolution of CO2, to yield the desired formamidine. Metabolism since amitra's most common use is as a pesticide, it is important to consider that between animals and plants often different pathways for biotransformation occur. Most animal species, including humans can metabolize amitra's rapidly to form six metabolites during biotransformation, and methyl and 2, 4 xylol, formamide, form 2, 4. Xylidine, 4 N methyl formidoyl, amino metatoluic acid, 4 formamido metatoluic acid, 4 acetamido metatoluic acid, and 4 amino metatoluic acid. In rats, the metabolic pathway figure 3, has been examined after oral administration of 14 C labeled amitras, which was found to be effectively metabolized, degraded, and excreted to 4 of the metabolites in urine and 6 in feces. The metabolic pathway or rate did not differ between the sexes. Hornish and Napier 1983, detected that the metabolic pathway after dermal administration follows the same route of degradation as after oral uptake, because the parent compound, N-methyl N. 2,4-xylyl formamidine and form 2,4-xylidide were found in urine and blood also after dermal administration. In humans, N-methyl N2, 4 xylol formamidine, form 2, 4, xylidide, 4 amino metatoluic acid, 4 acetamido metatoluic and 4 formamido metatoluic acids were recognized in the urine as well which indicates for the same or a similar metabolic pathway, as illustrated in figure 3 the first step is a hydrolysis reaction to N-methyl N2, 4 xylol formamidine, which already can be excreted in the urine but is still pharmacological active. Depending on the dose, the quantity of this metabolite in the urine can vary from 4% at low doses to 23% to 38% at high doses e.g. in case of rats, 1 to 100 mg per kilogram body weight. As it isn't excreted it also can be oxidized to 4-N-methylformidoyl amino metatoluic acid, which can be further oxidized to 4-formamido metatoluic acid. Form 2, 4-xylidine is formed directly by hydrolysis from amitras or arises from N-methyl N2, 4-xylol formamidine. During this early stage of biotransformation N-methyl N2, 4-xylol, formamidine and Form 2, 4-xylidine may already form conjugates. But the major route followed after the formation of Form 2, 4-xylidine is the oxidation to 4-formamido metatoluic acid, which is further metabolized to its acetyl conjugate, 4-acetamido metatoluic acid or 4-amino metatoluic acid. 4-formamido metatoluic acid and 4-acetamido metatoluic acid make 32% of the metabolites found in urine and are detected at any administered dose. Therefore, they are considered as two of the major metabolites in the amitras pathway. Form 2, 4, xylidide and 4 amino metatoluic acid account only for 2% of the total excretion. In insects different metabolites are formed. N-methyl and 2, 4 xylol formamidine, form 2, 4 xylidine and 4 amino metatoluic acid occur, but in addition several unidentified metabolites were detected, too. In plants the biotransformation of amitras proceeds very rapidly. The predominant metabolites detected are N2, 4 dimethylphenyl, and methylformamidine, BST 27271, and 2, 4 dimethylformanolide, BST 27919, N2, 4 dimethylphenyl, and methylformamidine, BST 27271, 2, 4 dimethylformanolide, BST 27919, and N, in bis dimethylphenylformamidine, BTS 28037, result from hydrolysis of amitras. 
thereby N2, 4 dimethylphenyl, and methylformamidine, BST 27271, occurs in higher amounts than 2, 4 dimethylformanilide, BST 27919. N2, 4 dimethylphenyl, and methylformamidine, BST 27271, can be further metabolized to 2, 4 dimethylformanilide, BST 27919, or 2, 4 dimethylaniline, BTS 24868, N, in bis dimethylphenylformamidine, BTS 28037, can be transformed to 2, 4 dimethylformanilide, BST 27919, or directly react to 2, 4-dimethylaniline, BTS 24868, but the exact mechanisms of these biotransformations are not known yet. However, of 2, 4-dimethylaniline, BTS 24868, and N, in bis dimethylphenylformamidine, BTS 28037, less than 1% has been accounted, which makes them minor metabolites compared to N, 2, 4-dimethylphenyl, in methylformamidine, BST 27271, and 2, 4-dimethylformanilide, BST 27919. Figure 4 shows the suggested amitris metabolic pathway in plants. Kinetics The hydrolysis reactions of amitris strongly depend on the environmental pH. Even though amitris undergoes hydrolysis reactions at any pH, spectrophotometry, HPLC, and GCMS studies revealed that pH-depending differences occur, affecting both the sort of reaction products and the reaction rate. Under basic conditions, pH greater than 6, amitris is metabolized to 2, 4-dimethylphenylformamide. Followed by hydrolysis to 2, 4-dimethylaniline, which also benefits from a basic pH. At very acidic pH, pH mechanism of action amitris is used as a pesticide. Therefore, amitris exposure to humans occurs mainly through inhalation or dermal contact with the compound during its use or production. The toxic effects to humans following on amitra's uptake include loss of consciousness, vomiting, respiratory failure, meiosis, hypothermia, bradycardia, hyperglycemia and central nervous system depression. The pharmacological activity of amitra's includes different mechanisms of action leading to toxic effects in humans as well as in animals. Many of these effects and most of the effects on humans are caused by its alpha-adrenergic agonist activity. Furthermore, amitris inhibits prostaglandin synthesis, interacts with the octopamine receptors of the central nervous system and inhibits monoamine oxidases. Animal studies revealed that damages due to amitris poisoning can be recovered even after exposure to a potentially lethal dose. This could mean that amitris effects are reversible or at least are recoverable. When an amitris poisoning is lethal, death results from respiratory depression. Alpha adrenergic agonist activity. Amitris is a central alpha adrenoreceptor agonist. That means that it selectively stimulates alpha adrenergic receptors, which are metabotropic G protein coupled receptors, that are usually targeted by catecholamines. Stimulating these receptors is, in great extent, the reason for the neurotoxic and preconvulsant effects of amitris. Xylene present in amitris formulations additionally induces central nervous system depression. Adrenergic receptors can be divided into two subclasses, alpha-1 and alpha-2 adrenergic receptors. To determine whether amitris interacts with subclass 1 odor subclass 2, subcutaneous injections of amitris 0.3 to 3.0 mg per kilogram were given to mice. Consequently, a dose-dependent delay of gastrointestinal transit in conscious mice occurs. This effect could be antagonized by alpha-2 adrenergic blocking agents, but administration of other antagonists did not reduce the depressant effect on the gastrointestinal transit. So it is suggested that amitris induced delay of gastrointestinal transit is mediated by postjunctional alpha-2 adrenergic receptors and appears not to involve the activation of beta-adrenergic, dopaminergic, serotonergic, histaminergic, cholinergic, GABAergic, or opioid receptors. Besides the neurotoxic effects other clinical effects observed in amitris poisoning are related to alpha-2 adrenergic agonistic activity. Adrenergic receptors are present in many different cells. The activation of these receptors by an agonist as amitris generally induces a sympathetic response. 
This leads to an increased heart rate, dilation of the pupils, elevation of blood pressure and blood and energy supply focus on skeletal muscles. Interaction with the octopamine receptor It's thought that the mode of action of amitras involves the interaction with the neuromodulator octopamine. This interaction is probably the reason for increased nervous activity of tics as a response on amitras. Usual activation of the receptors may lead to changes in the concentration of intracellular second messengers such as cyclic nucleotides cyclic AMP CAMP, and cyclic GMP, inositol 1, 4, 5 trisphosphate and CA2+. Influencing this signal transduction system can lead to various events depending on the cell type. Since it has been discovered that the octopamine receptor coding gene is expressed on very high rates in the somata of the honeybee brain, it is suggested that it is involved in the processing of sensory inputs, antennal motor outputs and higher order brain functions. The amitra's octopamine receptor interaction restrains these normal functions of the octopamine receptor. Therefore, it is efficient as an insect pesticide. Still, resistance against amitras can occur. A mutation can lead to a working version of the octopamine receptor but with an altered pesticide target side. This is probably the case for a very resistant Brazilian and Mexican tick strain, which have two nucleotide substitutions on the octopamine receptor coding gene compared with the Australian strains. A closer understanding of these resistance mechanisms would help to develop more rapid and accurate diagnostic tools for detecting resistance and steer development of alternative acaricides. Inhibition of monoamine oxidases In vitro a monoamine oxidase inhibiting effect of amitras has been found. Monoamine oxidases catalyze the oxidative deamination of monoamines and thereby form flavoproteins and inactivate neurotransmitters. However, in vivo it has been observed that only at high doses of amitras or its main metabolite N2,4-dimethylphenyl N-methylformamide monoamine oxidase inhibition occurs. In dogs it has been observed that after administration of such a dose an increase in plasma glucose and suppression of insulin occurs. Inhibition of prostaglandin synthesis Like other formamidines amitras inhibits the synthesis of prostaglandin E2 from arachidonic acid by bovine seminal vesicle microsomes. In a dose of 5 to 80 mg per kilogram body weight, given intraperitoneally to rats, amitras reduces yeast onduces fever and antagonizes the carrageenan-induced swelling of the hind paw. Some of the physiological effects of amitras probably go back to this aspirin-like activity and occur due to inhibition of prostaglandin synthesis. See also Mitoban References External links Amateurs in the Pesticide Properties Database PPDB.